comprehensive news because in today's world, you need more than just sound bites. TSPN, streaming on the World Wide Web, and now on demand at TSPNTV.com. Sawmill? Amador Sawmill and Mining Association. Hi everyone, Tom Slybick. Welcome to TSPN Today, and today I have a special guest. Uh, everyone knows the Amador County Fair is coming up, and I've got Bill Braun. Bill Braun runs the, one of the best exhibits at the fair, and that's the sawmill. And the mining exhibit is also, I think, uh, attached to that, or he's in, you know, uh, kind of in charge of that also. They've got uh, and uh, some giant steam engines out there that run the thing. So we're going to be talking to Bill, and he's one of my favorite guys to talk to. So stay with us right here on TSPN, and we're going to be back. We'll be talking about the fair. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN. Am I back? I'm back. Okay, here we go. And uh, hi, everyone. Tom Slavik with uh, Bill Braun. How you doing, Bill? Good to be back, Tom. Okay, we just saw you last night. We were at uh, the Amador County Fairgrounds, and uh, they had the fair sponsor dinner. Mm -hmm. And you're a fair sponsor? Yep. We had a, a lot of fair sponsors, and uh, I'd like to thank all of the fair sponsors here from TSPN as well to help keep that fair going because, as a lot of people know, you know, uh, the state uh, isn't contributing funds like uh, back in the old days. So I think we're in maybe, is this year two, I think, of uh, going it on our own? And mm -hmm. uh, maybe I think Tommy's got a few pictures from there, and, you know, Frank Halverson, once again, uh, as always, it seems like Frank's been doing that for as long as I've been around, uh, talking up the fair and to the fair sponsors. And like you saying, a lot of fairs uh, are having really hard times. Maybe some of them even went uh, well, by the wayside because uh, how hard it is. One but of the directors told me ten of them have folded. Okay. Or, uh, wow. Six of them have folded. It's projected maybe as many as ten next year will fold. Okay. And this is due to... Uh, the governor and the legislature cutting off zero, no funding, zero. In fact, this, the fairs and, and expositions board it still exists, but there's nobody employed there anymore. It's shuttered, pretty much. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's they're on. We're on our own entirely. It's kind of sad because um, you know, in a way, that money is well, probably pretty good seed money to get uh, uh, payback to the communities and all that mm -hmm. as well from uh, the fair attendance and mm -hmm. probably even in those those. Uh, Ten fairs that fail probably would have, uh, you know, probably would have done well. I'm just, I'm just saying that. I would, I would mm -hmm. think they would have done uh, well, but uh, it's hard to come up with everything. Here in Amador County, people love the fair so much. We're so close to it. We have such a good one that we've managed to keep it, keep it going. And a lot of that was with the, with the, uh, uh, the fair. Uh, foundation the fair foundation right and they were honored there as well last night pat crew i believe is the uh president, uh, president and ray ryan uh, uh the vice president and there was um, 10 uh, 11 others i can't think of all of their names mm -hmm. uh that were that were there to be commended for all of the things that they do also to keep the, the it's it is the saving grace for the fair along with the general community has stepped in to pick up the slack and as the directors have reported, their income and their expenditures are now balanced. It's much lower than it used to be, but at least they're not losing ground again. But it's a struggle to even maintain that. Okay. And there is no help coming from the state. Okay. None. And so it's, uh, it's up, I guess, to the private sector once again to keep things going. And exactly. luckily the private sector seems to have a way of uh, being able to uh, move lean and... Uh, and <laughs> I was told by the, one of the directors that the other fairs in the state have come up to the CEO of our fair and asked, how do you do it? We are losing ground. You are stable. How did you do it? And he had one answer. The community yeah. is saving us. We are working closely with the community and the sponsors, the benefactors, and that's why we're alive. So they want to yeah. know how. <laughs> a lot of the bigger communities, like, you know, Los Angeles, uh, although it's so big, you know, it really, before I moved up there, it, you really didn't have a sense of community in Los Angeles no. the, uh, uh, no, the way this is. 
you know, there's obviously there's a sense of community and you feel like an Angelino and all that, but uh, it's 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 not close. Amador County has an awareness of their fair. It's a big part of their community. You go to other communities in the metropolises, the fair is of no interest to the bulk of the population down there. It's just kind of like a little sideshow. And side the rides show. and the entertainment. Yeah, they go by the, and see the yeah. Ferris wheel going, and they say the fair is on, and they drive on. Here, we don't do that. Amador County community has very much invested in their fair. Right. Now, I'm not sure if Tommy can get to a big overall picture of, uh, right away or if, if uh, what we had, Ed, we kind of scrambled for this show to pull this up today. But... Uh, Another thing that Frank Halverson talked about is like when he, uh, Hill Hauser was here several years ago. I think it was probably just two or three. Eleven. Right before he passed 2011. away. 2011. And uh, uh, he, of course, he did a show on the Amador County Fair and loved the, your exhibit. Mm -hmm. Well, he loved the tractors. He loved the sawmill. He was just enthralled at how everything was put together from a community base and not from outside the community. He, he, it just fascinated him, you know. And he was just taken by, he couldn't get over it, <laughs> you know. I think he was still talking about it long after that series was done, you know. I mean, it's still being repeated on, you know, public right. television, but it's, it's a fascinating part of, a, of exposing Amador County and the community of Amador County as unique in that respect. And the, one of the great things I'm sure he appreciated was, you know, you can go out in that area and stand there and see so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, a, in such a very little area, they've got, right. you know, we've got old-time trucks. We've got old-time uh, uh, engines. Oh, trucks, the engines, the, uh, and people not only bring up the engines, but they the old -time bring Old-time tractors, things. everything. Yeah. Right. And a tractor parade pulling out, and uh, you know, and it's it's just fascinating, and I think uh, that is one of the biggest draws to the fair, and it's a very unique exhibit. It's, it has a 40-year history at the fair. The tractors, the sawmill, wow. have a 40-year history. There, it's been growing, you know, and it's become part of the fair. You couldn't take one out of the other now. It's just they're they're part and parcel. So. Okay. And, you know, you mentioned the tractors, and, uh, of course, one of the events when I first moved here, uh, one of the events that went on in the arena was the, the tractor, not tractor, but truck pulls. Uh -huh. And uh, they're, you know, made a comeback as well when mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, especially it's a, it's a good event without having the funds to pull in, a, I guess, a, a big name. But, what is, but they're, they're fantastic, and uh, the locals pull as well. They pack the house. Yeah. They pack the, the house. Noise is, the oh, noise yeah. is amazing. People are vying for reserve seats months ahead of time into the, those type of events there in the arena, you know, and elsewhere. It, it's well patronized. I mean, this is what keeps the whole thing moving ahead, keeps it alive, and keeps it vibrant. Okay. Now, I want to get maybe a little bit of history with you. How is it that you got so interested in the sawmill? Was the sawmill uh, kind of there, or did you help build that? Uh, the sawmill was, already, sawmill was there uh, <coughs> when I started attending the fair in 1991. Okay, 1991. And the previous right. exhibitor there, him and his family and friends, and uh, one of the previous fair directors, uh, fair uh, CEOs, had got it together and put it there in a very a very brief, a very small form, right? But it was something to build on. That mm -hmm. happened in 1970, 71, in that era. And then I came along in 1991. I wanted to exhibit with the tractor group there, my tractor. And I looked up the hill and saw the sawmill, took an interest, and I was, now we're here. <laughs> okay. After all these years, you know. So what kind of tractor did you have? A 1910 Case steam okay. tractor. All right. Now, what got you in, involved in collecting that tractor? Was that in your uh, family? I, I was, I, reti I retired I in 2000. You were a retired engineer. Right. I was a retired engineer and steam. I worked in steam and I uh, understood it. And that's why I bought the tractor. And then I just looked at the sawmill, looked at my tractor, and I said, we can hook these two together and make it a little bit more authentic. And as it went by, the years went by, it just grew and grew, and more and more guys came in and were interested and joined up, and we finally formed our own corporation in 2000, a nonprofit, 501c3 charity, and we've been off and running ever since. Okay, let's talk about some of the, some of the guys. I know you can't name them all, but, uh, you know, the people that uh, come, the volunteers that get interested. Now, you know, uh, year after year, I've been coming by, and mm -hmm. I see 
regulars uh -huh. there, and I also see uh, new people there, oh, yeah. and some of the people are engineers from uh, colleges in, in uh, other well, areas. We got, a, we got a prof retired professor of mechanical engineering, okay. We got a retired uh, biologist, uh, retired out of the state. Uh, uh, we've got uh, a, uh, a several teachers. Uh, uh, one was in metallurgy, and uh, they've got some people that are, have hobbies of blacksmithing in our group, too. We've got people that came out of electrical engineering. We've got people that are ranchers and cattlemen, you know. We've got people that came out of totally disconnected interests, right? We've got an, uh, a uh, rice farmer, okay, from okay. up in up in the valley. You know, we've got other people just like that. It's just across the board, you know, you name it. Uh, they just kind of come in and become interested. We get them signed up. They start working with us to uh, off season to get ready for the fair and to improve our exhibits and to build new exhibits. You know, and uh, our fundraising programs. We've got people that. Uh, handle the books and the website and so forth and so on. You know, when a person uh, joins, say if they join down, do, do they do they start like at the bottom and work up to the ranks? And we basically... So what's the bottom? Is it when you pull the boards off and put them in the... We've got, we've got multiple groups. We've, okay. got, we've got the sawmill group, and then we've got a machinery restoration group who likes right. to take antique machine tools and rebuild them and restore them for display. And then we've got a carpentry group that likes to build things so we, part of our fundraising is we will uh, not only sell some lumber but we also take some of our lumber and we make like picnic tables and uh, uh, wooden toys for kids and uh, miniature picnic tables for kids and chairs and stuff like that just made out of our rough cut lumber they're nicely done but they're not anything you're going to put in a in a uh, furniture store you know they're 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 for families you know and then we've got another group over here that's really into like uh, Building our website, building our uh, our advertisement, uh, planning, you know, uh, putting together programs. You know, we've got another group that teaches also. Currently, we we have a class in Amateur High School, okay. teaches machine t machine restoration, machine tool restoration. There's three guys involved in that, and yes. so this this coming uh, September they'll be back in the high school uh, two days a week, conducting these classes, and we're bringing in restored machines. And old machines for them to the kids to restore. I, I can't believe it. We've uh, we've we're blown the, the the format here for the time, and we're way over. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back and finish up uh, TSPN's uh, weekend news here uh, with uh, Bill Braun from the Amador uh, Sawmill and the uh, historic um, uh, mining group and everything here. We're talking about the Amador County Fair and uh, and uh, the old time stuff. So stay with us right here on TSPN. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I'm talking with Bill Braun. Bill, uh, we were talking about a lot of the people that get involved, and mm -hmm. what, what's the what's the love of uh, of working on these uh, old engines and this of uh, of the past? What's the love of the past that Re people express to you? Reacquainting ourselves with a time that will no never be nobody will experience again but finding out how people did their work how they lived at that time this is part of that it's like Williamsburg back in Virginia you know the right. heritage town back there the heritage community back there this is a little micro microcosm of that is how did they do their work well steam started the industrial revolution okay right we and one of as once one person said Thermodynamics is part of heat study, study of heat fluids and right. stuff like that. Well, we did not, how do you say, learn thermodynamics on its own. Steam taught us thermodynamics, okay? And it was our first power equipment, you know. First it was to, very crude engines, to pump water out of the mines in England, right, where Watt and Bolton started, you know. And then it morphed across the Atlantic, and then through Europe and around the world eventually, and it became, you know, the power source before electricity. It drove our locomotives, it drove our ships, you know. It provided uh, all kinds of manufacturing, p power from manufacturing plants, making clothing, making uh, smelting metal, making objects, you know, stuff like this, lumber, another one. And then electricity started 
coming in in the 1880s, 1890s, and it was fully established by the 1920s, you know. And steam started fading out through that point. And then gasoline, diesel engines, of course, came in right behind electricity. So now we're basically electricity, gasoline, or I should say electricity and petroleum-powered transportation infrastructure and everything else, okay, with some hydroelectric in there, of course. But it's still steam is in the background in large complexes. You have to remember, uh, many of the nuclear, many of the Navy carriers are all steam. They're all steam powered, but instead of burning oil in their boilers, they have a reactor that produces the heat. You right. know, and they're highly efficient and very powerful for these huge ships. And now the smaller ships run gas turbines and things like that. But steam is still an integral part ashore too. You know, we still have steam powered plants burning natural gas generating electricity, so forth and so on. Steam is still alive. You know, uh, um, everybody could probably think of, you know, like uh, Fulton and the steamboat, you know. Uh -huh. But uh, how soon before, uh, not to how soon, but when did the first steam engine, when was that built? Was that 16, 17? It was, it, they 18? first started, they wanted to start pumping the water out of the tin mines and the coal mines in England, okay? okay. And it was horse... It was mainly animal power, uh, lifting the water out of the mines through buckets or s through some kind of crude pump. Uh, they started investigating how to boil water, you know, and uh, they learned that if they took a container full of water, uh, boiled it, right, and generated steam, they could pipe this over to some kind of a mechanism, right, that they could have the steam in and they could spray water. It would condense the steam, right, and then that would imbalance the piston because the other side was open to the atmosphere. So the atmosphere would push the piston to, to overcome the vacuum, right? And okay. then they hooked a lever to that, which lifted a chain, which was hooked to a bucket or a hoop pump to pull the water up out of the mine. Very crude. Of course, this water boiler was coal fired and they used enormous amounts of coal to pump that water. But then it got more efficient and more efficient. And then the first engine that had a, what they call rotative, which was basically a wheel with a connecting rod and it turned a wheel then they could start belting things up you know to it so ingenuity just ran wild that well way. it just kept growing and growing everybody was trying to get a little bit better at the technology and it flourished you know from 1800 to 1900 and then electricity started supplanting it you know somewhat for raw power electric motors started coming in stuff like that so it uh, it's a progression of technology, but it was an important segment of that technology of progression. You know, it filled a big void for a century as a raw initial power to industrialize not only in England, but the United States and other places in the world. Okay. It, was, it was the core driving force, steam was. Okay. And getting back to the fair, what's uh, so nice about that as well is there's, the, uh, there's of course, the... Uh, the engine that drives the, you know, yes. the sawmill that runs the belt drives. Right. There's another thing, the, the, you know, all of the transmissions, the way to get mm -hmm. the energy to something else. But also then uh, just recently, uh, you know, in a couple of years, four years, five years, uh, there was the, uh, the steam plant, the new steam uh, boiler. boiler behind it. Mm -hmm. So when you come there now... Uh, it's it's a really fantastic display. Yeah, you, you guys are really efficient too. I mean, just cutting those logs and everything down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we the boys get pretty good at it. You know, they get uh, they get uh, fairly good at it. the guy that we have on the stick with the Sawyer and the sawmill. Okay. He's been with us from the beginning, and he's really. So he's got a lot of seniority. And now his it. son is in. You know, we have several uh, we have several offspring that started out there observing as just little boys. You know. Right. And now they're grown men, you know. Yeah. Some bigger than their fathers I've now. I've seen that happen. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so they're in there, and we've had some new people. We are getting a younger, a younger uh, members coming in all the time. Um, we have people coming as far away as San Diego now every year to participate with our group at the fair. They drive up here in three or four at a time. And uh, they spend the five, six days up here and then go home, and we see them again next year. You know, I love the, I love the sounds out there. They're, to me, they're very soothing. Uh, they're kind of like a heartbeaty kind of sounds, like, you know, fairly slow. Yeah, right. Boom, 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 chink, 
boom, boom. It's, you know? it's, it's the pulse of power. It's the th rhythm of, of industry, mm -hmm. industry, you know. Uh, it's, it's, as one, one lady told me, at one day we were cutting lumber and we had a sort of wet log there. And, of course, when your blade cuts through a wet log like a pine log, the odors come right out, you right. know. That's, that, to me, it's, it's a sweet smell. She says, oh, that smell is so strong. And I, I turned to her and I says, yes, ma'am, that's the sweet smell of money. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think, uh, okay. That's, uh, I think when we had the mill, sometimes you would go like, well, that, uh, that, that smells oh, yeah. like a lot of people working. Oh, yeah, the windmill and the Georgia Pacific used to be right up here in right. Martell. Oh, right. yes, you could smell it when you were going by. Okay. And to me, that was, I grew up in the lumber country. I grew up around sawmills. And that was always, that was part of, how do you say my comfort, knowing the mill was running, people were working, right. you know, everything was normal in the community, you know. I know that feeling well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, w would you like to look at that camera and uh, invite everybody to come on down and uh, you watch bet it? You bet you're done. Oh, I will. I will. Running? Go ahead. Sure. The, uh, the uh, fair starts on July 24th, runs through the 27th. That's a Thursday through Sunday. Our shows at the Amador Sawmill and Mining is uh, at the sawmill will be at 11 and three each day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Plus, on Friday nights and Sunday night, uh, Saturday nights, we will also have an additional show at 8 p.m. That's Friday night at 8 p.m. and Saturday night at 8 p.m. This is for the people that don't want to come out in the heat during the day well, I was and watch. Say, cool so evening. we found out after they suggested that we put on a show late in the evening, and so now they come in as they do every year, but they get to see the sawmill run. And also the mining display is next door to us. The stamp mill will be running. Right. Our steam donkey will be down in the lower area by the gas engine club. It will also be running. And our machine tool exhibit will be down there by the donkey. And they will be running their machinery. They're demonstrating machine t uh, turning metals and how they fabricate parts. Okay, so if you're fascinated with uh, old-timey stuff, and I don't know, why one wouldn't be, uh, come on down. You got the golden invitation right there. So thanks for watching TSPN, and we'll see you again next time.